Battleborn, Lithionix, Renogy, Volta, Master Vault! People have been arguing about the best lithium batteries for their RVs for a long time. Which is the most powerful? Which is the most reliable? Which is the safest? Which lasts the longest? That's a lot to debate. But are we asking the right questions? As you may know, Winnebago uses both Lithionics and Volta systems, depending on the motorhome you're interested in. And of course, we had a choice between Lithionics and Mastervolt in our embassy RV build. But for the most part, there aren't a lot of RV manufacturers that give you a choice in brand of battery. Even so, the questions people ask about battery systems are still valid. So how do you know which is the best battery out there? Most people would answer that question by saying the power of the battery was the determining factor, and then go on and talk about watts and amps and volts and formulas and whatever else they could think of. So let's say you think amps is where it's at. Amps gives an indication of how much energy you are storing, like the number of gallons of water in a lake. So that must equate to how long something will last, right? Well, not exactly. Then maybe the amount of voltage is what you want to look at. A 48 volt system must have more power than a system with a measly 12 volts, right? Again, not exactly. Voltage is an indication of the, the force of the electron flow, or more easily put, an indication of how much power you can get to an electrical component, and how quickly. It, it's like comparing a, a steep river that flows quickly to a calm stream. The steeper river flows faster. The real indication of power is wattage, or the product of volts and amps. So a 100 watt light bulb should be brighter than a 40 watt bulb, right? But what does that really tell us? A battery that provides 12,000 watts of power would be rated at 250 amps on a 48 volt system because 250 times 48 is 12,000. But a 12 volt system with 1,000 amps would also provide 12,000 watts of power. The high voltage in one system doesn't make it have more power, nor is the system with higher amperage any more powerful either. Since their voltage is different, they both end up with the same amount of power, 12,000 watts, because the amperage is also different. There are advantages and disadvantages to any system, 12 volt or 48 volt, and the wattage is an only an indication of total power, not about how you use that power. In all honesty, it doesn't tell you anything. You heard me. It doesn't, it doesn't tell, tell you tell anything. anything. If batteries of different voltage and amperage can still result in the same amount of watts, judging a battery by the way it's delivered really doesn't tell you what you need to know. We need to look at power systems in a completely different way. Looking at battery voltage as an indication of power or thinking the amperage of a battery tells you how long a battery will last in any given situation, is well off the mark. The wattage, voltage multiplied by amperage, indicates power, but it really isn't the whole story. You have to consider how much usable capacity you really have in your energy system. A properly managed lithium system will not allow the battery to discharge all the way down to 0%, as this could be damaging to the battery. But the percentage of that total capacity changes from system to system depending on who designs it. For instance, one manufacturer uses a 90% margin. In other words, if you have 12,000 total watts of power, you would really have 10,800 watts available. Another battery system uses an 85% margin, so with the same 12,000 watts, you would only have 10,200 watts of available energy.
No matter what kind of lithium battery you may have, all can potentially be dangerous and catch fire. I mean, they are full of energy, right? You want to know the designers are making safety a priority. Consider that there are different types of lithium battery chemistries. The most common lithium technologies being used for RVs are lithium iron phosphate, or LFP, and nickel manganese cobalt, or NMC. NMC batteries have a higher energy density than LFP batteries, so can be lighter and cheaper to build. This can be a great advantage when building an RV where weight is a primary consideration. Although heavier and more expensive, the materials in LFP batteries are easier to recycle and somewhat safer at higher temperatures than batteries using NMC chemistry. These differences don't make one better than the other. They are just different technologies. A quality built lithium system should work safely regardless of the actual chemistry used. Your mileage may vary. You should also know lithium can be divided into three categories, A grade, B grade, and used. The grade used for the battery determines cost and reliability. That's one of the reasons you can find batteries with the same number of amps sold at vastly different prices. And not only that, battery cell capacity can change in a production line from one cell to another. The battery cost will go up if the manufacturer takes time to separate cells based on that capacity. And that's very important, since cells of different capacities in the same battery can cause shorts, and that can be quite a fire hazard. Batteries are just things that store energy. What really matters is the energy is being used to power something like a microwave or air conditioner. How effective these products are can make a considerable difference in how much energy you need to use. For instance, um, a 120 volt air conditioner needs to have an inverter so you can use a battery to power it, whether it's a 12 volt or a 48 volt system. Inverters are notorious energy hogs whenever they are turned on, even if they aren't powering anything at all which results in using more battery power or watts. A 12-volt AC unit on a 12-volt battery system doesn't need the inverter, so less power used. Another consideration is the RV build itself. What if the van insulation isn't quite up to what it should be? That AC is going to be going on and off a lot more often than one in a well-insulated RV, which means more watts being used, so the quicker that battery runs out of power. And what if you spend all your time in the desert, while someone else sticks around a much milder climate? Your use of AC will be much greater, and that AC is going to have to work much harder to keep you cool. In other words, it's using more power to do the job. Wattage alone doesn't tell you how long the AC will last you. There are just too many factors in play. At best, it gives you a general idea of how long you may have in your van. The real test of any battery system is how it works in the real world under the conditions you and only you work under. It really doesn't matter how much power the battery has or whether it's a 48 or 12 volt system or how someone else uses their RV. What matters is, does it do the job you need it to do? Let's say you travel in a milder climate. You may not need your AC on all the time, so having 120 volt AC works just fine. And if your system gives you enough usable watts, it doesn't really matter if you need an inverter on all the time. It works for your specific needs, and that's what really matters. But if you live or travel in a very hot climate, the AC has its work cut out for it. You could easily have that AC on for 8 or 12 hours or even more hours every day. It would be advantageous to have a 12-volt AC system so you wouldn't need an inverter running all the time. You'd save energy so the AC would run longer. If you always need batteries to charge up quickly, like if you stay in one place for extended periods with no power connections, then a 48-volt system may be an important consideration for you. It simply charges much faster than a 12-volt system ever could. 
But if you travel every day and your alternator charges the battery up to 100% before you arrive at your destination, who cares about charging speed? In the end, it's all about how you travel and how you are going to use those batteries. Keep safety in mind and, of course, do all your research. But take time to understand your needs and you'll understand what systems work best for you. There is no one right answer for every person or even every RV. It all depends on your style of travel and how much you're going to rely on that battery. Be seeing you.